I'm Dr. Carmen Huckle Schneider. Today we're discussing reducing diagnostic error with Dr. Mark Graber, the keynote speaker at our ninth HARC Forum. It's possibly the biggest patient safety concern we have at the present time. Our best guess is that one in ten diagnosis is wrong, and not all of those lead to harm. Maybe it's just one in a hundred. Many errors are discovered in time or corrected, or it's inconsequential, the error that you made. But that's the pool from which patients can get injured or killed. In the States, we believe that 40,000 to 80,000 patients a year are uh, killed from diagnostic error. And in Australia, that would be the equivalent of two to 4,000 patients a year. It's a very big problem. The other half of the issue is that we don't really have a count of how many patients are being injured from diagnostic error. There's not a single hospital in your country or mine that's measuring the rate of diagnostic error. Uh, hospitals don't know how to measure right now, and that's the biggest research challenge that we face. They arise because diagnosis is really hard. Uh, it's complicated. There are maybe 10,000 diseases, and they don't present in 10,000 different ways. They present in maybe 50 different ways. And each disease may present differently in different patients. So the doctors face a really uh, serious challenge in trying to solve the riddle when a patient comes to them. And I think they do a remarkable job. We probably get it right 90% of the time, 95% of the time. I don't really know. But what I would like to see is that we get it right 98% of the time. So some of the errors arise become because of the cognitive failings that surround human decision making. We're not perfect decision makers. We solve a lot of problems intuitively, and it's a wonderful strategy. It's how experts solve problems. But using your intuition is error prone. Uh, it's not perfect, and it can lead to diagnostic error. The other big issue is that our healthcare systems are very complex and getting more so. So patients can be receiving care from different doctors or different healthcare systems. They don't share information. Communication is difficult. Coordinating care is difficult. Making sure all the diagnostic test results get back to the right person and are acted upon is difficult. So there's challenge after challenge in the system of healthcare that we have, and that's true universally. Yeah, that's the challenge that we face, very little at the present time. It's a new issue on the patient safety horizon. Um, we're just starting to realize that it is a major concern, and that's the point that we're at. What we're trying to do is raise awareness on the part of doctors and patients and healthcare organizations to understand that it is a major issue, and it needs more study, and it needs to be taken seriously, and we do need to start acting in a way that will reduce the risk of error. Right, well we don't really know how to measure, I would say it's the biggest problem we face right now. Healthcare organizations have many different systems in place to capture adverse medical events, but none of those are good at capturing diagnostic errors. Uh, and we used to do autopsies. It used to be a very rich way to learn about diagnostic errors, and autopsies have virtually disappeared. So we've lost that source of learning, and nothing's replaced that. So we need to find a way to start seeing these errors and studying them. And I don't think it would be that tough. I think if you just ask the patients, for example, if a patient is seen in the emergency room, can we call them back in a couple weeks and say, how are you? Are you okay? And did we get the diagnosis right? I think the patients will tell us. I think the doctors would tell us if we had a simple, easy way for them to provide us the information. If the doctors knew we were interested to learn about these things, I think they would tell us too. And there's other approaches that are, are just being experimented with now. There's something called trigger tools. For example, if you just start reviewing medical records, um, you will have a difficult time finding diagnostic errors. But if you use uh, a, a algorithm that looks for patients who were first seen in clinic and then are admitted to the hospital a couple weeks later, 
that kind of a trigger identifies a cohort of patients in whom there's a much higher incidence of diagnostic error. A colleague of mine, Hardeep Singh, just did a study on this and found that if you use a trigger tool like the one I just described, one in 20 charts will have a diagnostic error, a tenfold enrichment compared to just reviewing random charts. So I think there's ways to learn and we just have to start using them. There are all sorts of interventions that I think will help and the problem is that they haven't been studied and they haven't been researched. There are things like um, getting a second opinion, very valuable way to find diagnostic errors. There's nothing like fresh eyes looking at a case to see an error that's been overlooked. That works very well. There's all sorts of decision support resources that are available now that doctors could use to advantage. Um, there's web-based programs like Isabel or DXplain, and these are, uh, they work very well. You put in the key findings from a case, and these programs will tell you a differential diagnosis to consider. Here's 10 d diseases. Did you think of these things? That's one of our biggest problems, is that we don't put together a complete differential diagnosis when we examine a patient and try and formulate the, our impressions. So these software programs could help us do a better job with that, and we just have to start using them and evaluating them and see if they work. Mark Graber, thank you very much for answering our questions. Thank you, Carmen. Thanks for your interest.